I do think that, you know, there are a couple things that, you know, f uh, do direct us a little bit more, like hepatitis B, for example, you know, would direct us towards a tenofovir containing regimen. Um, and, you know, maybe in very advanced disease with low CD4, we might not use a two drug therapy. I think that's another potential issue. Um, it's funny, there's so kind of few things to worry about. We it really have, you know, really like two or three choices for initial therapy. It's not that complicated anymore. Um, and maybe this is a, some, a comment on how good things are. We, we now worry, I guess, about weight. Um, we have some of our therapies we're worried a little bit about weight gain. And I don't know, Colleen, have you seen that in your practice? And, and Yes, absolutely. And I think it's, um, you know, I think metabolic issues have long been a concern with antiretroviral agents. Um, but this specific um, really kind of rapid weight gain um, that we've seen with some of the integrase inhibitors was a little bit surprising. Right, right. Um, and I absolutely have seen it. Um, and I have switched people off of their regimen because of weight gain and actually new onset diabetes and other metabolic issues that kind of came along with that, that weight gain. Um, I think that, you know, the jury is still out on exactly what the cause of that is kind of mechanistically um, and, and who might be at risk specifically. Mm -hmm. But I do believe it is an issue for a minority of patients. Um, uh, but you will see it, I think, if you treat enough people with the integrase inhibitors. And so it is something to keep in mind. It doesn't necessarily change what I'm going to do to start Right. But my, uh, you know, my awareness is heightened. I'm, sure. I'm looking out sure. for it. Do, do you tell people anything differently, Ian, when I, you start I do. therapy? Uh, I, I tell them that they may gain weight on this. And it's, it's potentially more of an issue for women than it is for men. It, and it may not just be the integrase inhibitor component. There's, an, there's a, some evidence, uh, and Julia, you referred to this earlier, that it may happen a little bit more in people who are on TAF than TDF. Um, so I tell my patients um, that you may gain weight on this. Everybody who starts antiretroviral therapy on average gains some weight. But here we're talking about excess weight gain in one study called ADVANCE uh, over 96 week period. The average weight gain of women on TAF, lamivudine uh, and dilutegravir was 10 kilograms. That's a lot of weight. Um, so. Um, I tell my patients that now that their body is not fighting HIV and burning more calories in the immunologic battle to control their infection, they've got to cut down the amount of food that they're eating, you know, in order to be metabolically sort of at equilibrium. Um, and, and I tell my patients to let me know uh, if they're going to, uh, if, if they've noticed that they, they're starting to gain weight. Uh, because occasionally you do need to switch people off to an alternative regimen. Yeah. And, and maybe we should talk about what that regimen would be. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, let's, let's talk about switch <laughs> one second. I want to, I want to touch on, on one more thing, but then we should actually kind of talk about um, switch. But um, uh, any reason to use a boosted drug as a first-line therapy, meaning a, a, a fourth agent in the mix to, to um, uh, prop up one of the other agents? Is there, is there a reason to do that? Any, anybody? I mean, not as, I mean, not as initial therapy. All the boosted regimens are now an alternative or right. non-preferred, and, and there's got to be some special circumstance where you're where using you, them. Yeah. So, okay. no, I can't yeah. think of I, yeah, I, just I, I would say one thing. A boosted protease inhibitor may not be a bad uh, uh, combination for an adolescent or somebody who you're worried about adherence if you're not getting any baseline resistance testing. Um, it, it's certainly true that uh, an integrase inhibitor regimen, uh, a second generation integrase inhibitor regimen, there's probably low probability of baseline resistance, but the DHHS guidelines do endorse a boosted protease inhibitor. I'm not talking about using it as a fourth drug. I'm talking about a, in a three-drug combination, a boosted protease inhibitor uh, is is a preferred regimen for immediate start. Right. Uh, Good. I, just, yeah. I just got chills because I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that because you know the you know think back to our our Drunavir regimen. Those the. the pill burden, the size, I, you know, I can't think of, even for an adolescent, to be honest, yep. the resistance profile, I much 
would favor going to Big Tiger Bear right. for adherence right. Right. Um, than to. So I'll, I'll, for, for my adolescence, I'll stand up and say, <laughs> Tiger Bear wouldn't yeah. be. Able to. <laughs> it, there's now a one pill. Uh, fixed dose combination, so it's not pill burden. It is a larger pill. It's a than larger the pill. It's actually it's it's no smaller than, than, <laughs> than the. It's somehow they got four drugs and, and squished it up, again, so it's smaller <laughs> than the two drugs. Julia, t t um, I know that in the the U.S. we don't really talk that much about cost of drugs, and you mentioned generics, and um, you know how 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 do we balance this in general terms? What what you know at some point we. We, um, we, we really are going to have to think about this, I think. Yeah, I mean, as you know, the, there's this federal initiative to end the HIV epidemic, and the key pillars of that initiative are treatment um, for everyone who needs it and right. PrEP. And so antiretroviral medications are really the solution all around, but they're incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. And at the estimates of the costs that it would take to really end the epidemic are really potentially beyond what society can withstand. Right. So we have to we have to really think about it. I don't know what the solution is, but sure, it's sure. a problem. I, I mean, I'm starting to see it in in my practice, like that we talked about the two drug combination of, of dolutegravir and lamivudine. I've now prescribed that a few times and was told, well, you can give them the dolutegravir, but you have to get generic lamivudine. lamivudine. You can't give them the single tablet. I've had a couple of instances where um, uh, the... TDF, FTC, I was told, no, no, you can give them TDF, 3TC, because that's generic and, and, and less expensive. So there, it, it kind of is getting in there. And I think, um, uh, but from the patient point of view, frequently the patient sees a different expense, right? Because the generics don't have a copay card, for example, uh, whereas the trade drugs might have a copay card. So you, you switch them to generic, they actually have a copay. So it's really complicated. Um, it would take hours. We should, we should probably... <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe just to um, mention in the context of PrEP, um, the USPSTF recommendations are hopefully going to waive cost sharing for PrEP medications, for all PrEP medications oh, starting wow. next year. So um, even though there may be more patient assistance programs for the brand name medications, it may be that there's no cost sharing for any of them. That would be fantastic. Yeah, because yeah, I, th I, I think... With, especially with prep, but small barriers can can be really a, a huge disincentives um, for for people that have trouble persisting anyway. And and you may think, oh, well, it's ten dollars, but it it could be the difference between you know a seventeen year old taking it or not taking it, right? I mean, yeah. uh, well, a healthy person that's HIV right, negative right, that right. has no you know reason or motivation to be on this except right. for prevention. Right. If it's going to cost you something. Mm -hmm. Or if the complexity of figuring out how to get the costs covered is just too much. Right, right, yeah. yeah.